Sometimes a game may be terrible, but the music is incredibly memorable and awesome. Here's a list of 10 mediocre games with fantastic music. Alright, first up is Tron Evolution. Now, this is a game that got a surprising amount of hype when it came out. Uh, like the uh, the movie that it came out with, um, this game ostensibly has a soundtrack by Daft Punk, um, which uh, I'm not sure how involved Daft Punk actually were with the, the minutia of the game's soundtrack, but uh, definitely has the same uh, overall aesthetic as the movie, um, as, as far as the sound goes, and, and really, really a killer soundtrack that kind of does this thing where... Um, You'll be you'll be uh, moving through the game, and uh, it'll kind of it'll just start to, to pick up a bit, and and you'll be hanging it on, just sort of wanting it to get a little bit, a little more intense, a little more intense, a little more intense, and it gradually will, uh, and then it'll kind of subside, and then you'll go about some more business, it'll gradually get a little more, a little more intense. It just does this really nice kind of um, uh, teasing you to, to get farther and farther in the game, um, with the hope of, of the of the music kind of picking up a bit. Uh, so uh, yeah, number ten, Tron Evolution. Take a listen. Number nine is is maybe a bit of an odd choice here. Uh, <laughs> number nine is Back to the Future for the NES. Uh, this game has uh, has has about a one track soundtrack. I, I think there may, might be more than one track in this game, but really, there's there's only one that matters, um, and that is uh, that is this song, uh, which uh, plays over the um, uh, over every level, as far as I know. I haven't actually gotten very far in this game, but um, uh, it is incessant and repetitive and ridiculous and kind of great. So it is, it is number nine on this list just because it is so memorable uh, and, uh, and trapped in such a terrible game. <laughs> Take a listen. Ridge Racer Unbounded. Uh, this game came out at uh, arguably the peak of the dubstep craze, uh, and uh, it was filled with uh, with crazy dub licensed dubstep music, as well as I think some original compositions. Um, and uh, again, maybe not not uh, not an amazing uh, game itself, but uh, the licensed music combined with the um, uh, a bit of sort of dynamic mixing that happens while you're racing uh, really makes for a, a pretty pleasant experience. So. Uh, number eight, Ridge Racer Unbounded. All right, number seven is The Adventures of Bayou Billy for the NES. Uh, I was actually unfamiliar with this game until I told a friend that I was compiling this list, uh, and he said I should take a look at this. Uh, it really does deserve to be on here. Such a terrible game, but the soundtrack is kick-ass. Uh, it's really, really memorable, really catchy. Uh, I really enjoy it quite a bit. It makes playing this game almost worth it. Take a listen. The Adventures of Bayou Billy.
All right, number six is SSX. Uh, that's the 2012 SSX, um, which uh, is not a particularly memorable game for a lot of people. I remember there being a lot of hype around it. I was very excited about it, being a fan of the old SSX games. But then it came out, and it just it just didn't catch people the way the, uh, the original games had. Uh, despite that, though, it has a really, really awesome soundtrack. Um, lots of great tracks that then they, they've taken and dynamically mixed with, uh, um, with, with, with what you're doing on the slopes. Um, and then, of course, when you, uh, when you line up your, uh, when you fill up your tricky meter and, uh, and that little, uh, that little tune plays, uh, that is the ultimate, ultimate hit. So yeah, SSX 2012, um, again, not a great game, but, uh, uh hell of a soundtrack. Here it is. <laughs> Number five is Tempest 2000. Um, now, uh, this this game actually came out for the Atari Jaguar, and uh, because I don't own a Jaguar, uh, what you're seeing is actually me playing it on uh, uh, playing a re-release of it called Tempest X3 uh, for the PS1. And unfortunately, in that version, apparently the the audio came out a little muffled. Um, and uh, not quite as good as on the original Atari Jaguar version. Uh, but regardless, this is, um, uh, <laughs> well, not, I mean, sure, it's Tempest, but, uh, you know, it's not a, this game in and of itself is, is fairly mediocre, uh, as far as I, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, but this soundtrack is, is really great, really pounding, awesome, uh, uh techno, uh, mixes, um, and a lot of fun to listen to, uh, even on its own. So, Tempest 2000, number five. Number four is a personal favorite, Putter Golf. Uh, this is a terrible game for the PS1 uh, that uh, has a very limited scope in uh, in what it offers to you. Uh, really, not a lot of uh, um, not a lot there in Putter Golf, except 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 uh, that music. Uh, so uh, the the first of all, the the uh, the front menu screen music is uh, is pretty great. Take a listen to this. And uh, not only that, but there's some there's some uh, in-game music that's all right too. The problem is that in-game music tends to repeat itself constantly. Uh, on pretty much every hole, you get the music played over again from the beginning, which uh, I'm sure saved time in development, but uh, <laughs> doesn't doesn't exactly make for the best experience. Regardless, I think the music is pretty great. Uh, Putter Golf makes it at number four. All right, number three is Double Dragon Neon. Uh, now, I'm not that much of a Double Dragon fan to begin with, so I, I find it hard to pass judgment on this game entirely. But uh, I will say the music is fantastic. Really, really awesome. Um, probably the best part of the game. And uh, just a, an awesome variety of, uh, of 80s-infused uh, tracks. And then even on the PS3, the, uh, uh, the music that plays when you're, you're highlighting the game on the cross-media bar is incredible. Also super, super loud. So yeah, Double Dragon Neon number three. Take a listen. Number two is Tie the Tasmanian Tiger. Uh, now this game is is pretty much your standard 3D platformer. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, inventive stuff going on, but the, uh, ah, the soundtrack is great. There's all this Australian infused stuff, uh, didgeridoos, and uh, <laughs> just some <laughs> awesome, awesome uh, kick-ass music you want to listen to again and again. Um, uh, soundtrack was was composed by uh, by George Stamatiadis, I think that's that's how you pronounce that. Uh, really great, worth listening to. Probably the best part of the game. <laughs> Take a listen. Number two. 
This billabong has got the lot. Gum trees, wallabies, and even a koala. <laughs> There's plenty to do here, so let's get a move on. Alright, number one is the Cheetah Men. Uh, this is one of the games off of the Action 52 cartridge for the NES. It's a really sloppily put together game, but uh, somehow, in all that sloppiness, they managed to uh, put together a actually very awesome theme song. Uh, the theme song is, it will get stuck in your head, it is super memorable, it's super kick-ass, it is very much worth listening to, even though the game is atrociously bad. <laughs> so take a listen. Alright, and I've got one bonus one for you, so while I was looking at the Cheetah Men, uh, I actually stumbled across this other game on the Action 52 cartridge called Silver Sword, um, which uh, is, is similarly terrible and sloppily made, but has also a rather kick-ass soundtrack. Uh, so take a listen to the music from Silver Sword for the NES. Silver Sword! 